Aloha and good morning. I uh, <coughs> wanted to do a YouTube series on the study of Psalms. And uh, there's a lot of information to cover here. That's why I decided to put it on YouTube. <coughs> and uh, we could just work our way through it. I want to try to keep these about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, <coughs> hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, I chose the book of Psalms oh, way back before I got married. I started studying the book of Psalms. I, I worked at a uh, AAA, uh, selling AAA. I would set up my tent at different DMVs around Lakeland and Orlando. And uh, <clears throat> when people came out of the DMVs, I'd try to, or try to sell them the AAA. And I was there with a lot of time on my hands, sometimes sitting there for hours uh, with nobody coming by. And so I got a three-volume uh, commentary on the Book of Psalms, and I started uh, <clears throat> just studying it. And it really got my interest, and I started really studying the Book of Psalms after that. I've went through many different commentaries after that, and I've taken lots and lots of notes. I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to bring it close to the camera, but that's just a sample of some of my notes that I have in Psalms. <clears throat> then after I got married, I went to a church in Miami, and I was, I don't even remember what I was preaching on, but I must have been preaching on one of the Psalms or something. And a gentleman came up to me after the church. He's, he's passed away now. Uh, but he showed me something pretty cool. And that is that if you, if you, whatever day of the month it is, like today is the 20th, if you read Psalms chapter 20, because today's the 20th, and then you add 30 to that, so you'd read Psalms 20, and then you would read Psalms 50, and then you add 30 to that, so then you would read uh, Psalms 80, and then you would add 30 to that, so then you'd read Psalms 110, and then you add 30 to that, so you'd read Psalms 140. <clears throat> so that's five Psalms that you would read a day, and you do that every day, you'll have read through the whole book of Psalms in one month. And I think I had just gotten married uh, when he showed me that, and he said that he did it every morning for his devotions, and it was a real blessing. And he also said it's amazing how everything just ties together. And so I thought, well, I'm going to start doing that. So I've done that now since for about, oh, 11 years. Uh, I've been reading five psalms a day and <clears throat> taking lots of notes while doing it. So I've got a lot of information, and uh, <clears throat> I think this is... Uh, one of the best ways to get it out is over YouTube. So today we'll do an introduction to the book of Psalms. <clears throat> the book of Psalms was uh, a Hebrew hymn book. This is what they used. They sang out of this. <clears throat> of course, some of the authors are Asaph, which we didn't know is uh, David's uh, psalmist that he had there, and uh, the sons of Korah, which were also singers in the temple. <clears throat> they were also listed as David's mighty men. And this is one of the best known and best loved of all the books in the Word of God. Psalms is a book of superlatives, <clears throat> being the longest book of the Bible and also having the shortest book in the Bible, short, or longest chapter and the shortest chapter. The longest chapter is obviously Psalms 119. It's the largest chapter in the, in the whole Bible, and it has to do with the Word of God. That's the theme of Psalms 119. The shortest chapter in the Bible is Psalms 117, and it's just three verses there. <clears throat> the Psalms have more authors than any other book in the Bible, <clears throat> at least seven different authors that we know of, and they cover a larger time frame than any other book in the Bible, about roughly a thousand years, because Psalms 90 was written by Moses about 1500 B.C., and then you have uh, Psalms 126 and Psalms 127, which was were written after the Babylonian captivity about 500 B.C., so you got about a thousand year span there with the book of Psalms. <clears throat> Psalms is often overlooked by many as being nothing more than a beautiful poetry or devotional material to be consulted in time of crisis or, or during personal devotions. This book, however, is heavily laden with doctrine and prophecy, and along with uh, Deuteronomy and Isaiah, is one of the three most quoted books in the New Testament, often being quoted by Jesus Christ himself. The word psalm simply means praise. So that's the Hebrew word for praise. And praise, indeed, is the central theme of the book. Uh, everywhere you look, just about in the book of Psalms, it has to do with praise. <clears throat> the book, however, is not limited just to praise itself, as every known emotion is experienced and expressed by the psalmist. 
David wrote a lot of the Psalms, and he is known as being a man after God's own heart. What is a heart? Well, when it talks about the heart in the Bible, it's talking about your soul. It's talking about your emotions. It's talking about your intellect, your will. <clears throat> the heart is the seat of your emotions. And so when you get into the book of Psalms written by David, a man after God's own heart, what you're going to see here uh, through this book is the heart of God. You're literally going to see the emotions that Jesus Christ experienced on this earth. And you're going to see the heart and nature of God himself. As a matter of fact, the book of Psalms is located right in the very heart of the Bible. If you were just to open your Bible to the middle of the Bible, you'd land on the book of Psalms. <clears throat> and it is the very heart of God. <clears throat> the Psalms fa falls into five very distinct groupings called the five books of Psalms that, <clears throat> that by no accident are parallel with the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Each of these books ends in a very clear doxology, a hymn of praise addressed to God Almighty. So the first book or section of, of the book of Psalms is going to be Psalms chapter 1 through Psalms chapter 41. The theme of those Psalms is trusting God. That parallels with the book of Genesis. Theme, trusting God. Then you come to the second books or book of Psalms. That would be Psalm 42 through Psalm 72. And the theme of those Psalms is Israel before God, which parallels with the book of Exodus. Then you come to the third book of Psalms, which is Psalm 73 through Psalms 89, and all of those Psalms have to do with the sanctuary or the temple of Israel. Of course, that's going to parallel with the book of Leviticus. And then you come to the fourth book of Psalms, which is Psalms 90 through Psalms 106, and all of that has to do with Israel's history. You're going to see them being led uh, through the wilderness and their attitude and everything that happens in Israel's history up to that time that parallels with the book of Numbers. And then you come to the last section, the last book in Psalms, which is Psalms 107 through Psalms 150. And in those Psalms, you have an exaltation of God's word. And of course, that's going to parallel with the book of Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law. The placement of the book of Psalms in the word of God is very important. You know, God doesn't do anything by accident. Everything's done decently and in order. And the very place where he put Psalms is important too. In the Old Testament, the Jews recognize three divisions in the Bible. These three divisions are found in Luke chapter number 24, verse number 44. It says this, Jesus is uh, speaking here, and he's, he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you, Israel, <laughs> I'm sorry, which I spoke unto you, while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written, and then he gives the, the breakdown of the Old Testament here, in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So he gives you the layout of the Old Testament. There is the law of Moses, there's the prophets, and then there is the Psalms. And that's exactly how the Old Testament was laid out in the Old Testament times. They're not writ they weren't, the books of the Old Testament are, were not laid out like they are for us in the New Testament. They started off with the Pentateuch, then you had the prophets, and then the Psalms were the very end of, of the Old Testament. Psalms was the first of the third divisions, and it was actually the 27th book, and it came right after the book of Malachi uh, in the Old Testament in Jewish scriptures. In, our, in the New Testament Bible, the Psalms is the 19th book of the Bible. And by parallel, matches the premillennial view of the Bible interpretation as laid out for us in the book of Revelation. So if you look at the layout of, of the books and, and how, they, how they fall into order, it gives you a, a layout of Israel's history. For instance, the book of Sef, Second Chronicles uh, is the disparation dis, of Israel. That matches the events of 70 A.D. when Israel was dispersed. Then you come to the book of Ezra. Ezra is the regathering of Israel. It matches the events of 1918 to our present, present day. Then you come to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is rebuilding Jerusalem, and that matches the events of 1948 to present. Then you come to the book of Esther. Esther starts off with a rapture. Vashti, the Gentile queen, she did not want to. Um, uh, she did not want to wear the royal crown. She did not want to be in the king's presence, and she didn't want to display her beauty. So the king uh, 
<laughs> got rid of her and <clears throat> turned his attention to Esther, a Jewish queen. Uh, Vashti is raptured off just like a picture of the church. In our Laodicean church age, the church does not want to display the beauty of holiness. She does not want to wear the royal crown, and she does not want to be in his presence, the king's presence. And so she's going to be raptured out of here and immediately go to the Bema Seat judgment of Christ. And God is then going to turn his attention to Israel, which would parallel with Esther, the Jewish, uh, the Jewish queen. <clears throat> and in that, you see many feasts in the book of Esther, which is going to match the marriage and wedding feasts of Revelation chapter 19. Then you come to the book of Job. Job is uh, a book of suffering and tribulation. There's 42 chapters in the book of Job, and Israel is going to go through 42 months of tribulation, seven years of tribulation. It matches the events of Revelation chapter 4 through Revelation chapter 19. That brings us to the book of Psalms. Psalms is about the king and his kingdom. Many, many, many psalms are about the millennial kingdom. Lots of psalms are. Or the events leading up to the millennium, as we'll look in our study at psalms. This is going to match the events of Revelation chapter 19 through Revelation chapter 22. There are six basic types of psalms. You have hymns of praise. <clears throat> These psalms contain a call to praise, a reason for praise, and a conclusion. You have psalms of individual praise. They begin with a proclamation, has a narrative, looks back at a problem, <clears throat> reaccounts prayer, reports God's deliverance. They all acknowledge uh, the role of God, and they all have a moral uh, uh, application to them. And then you have songs that are descriptive praise. They begin with an imperative. They sum up God's mighty acts. They tell us of God, of who God is and what he does, and are usually given in a national perspective. And then you have declarative praise. <clears throat> They begin with the phrase, I will. They tell of specific intervention by the Lord, and they contain a confession or a testimony, and usually they're from the angle of a personal perspective. And then you have psalms of national lament. All of Israel is lamenting here. They begin with the phrase, O God, or O Lord. And in these psalms, you see confessions of trust in God. Often they ask why. Uh, why why doth, doth my soul go through this? Why, God, haven't you answered my prayers? And they often have a vow at the end of them to praise God. And then you have the last group of psalms, and that's individual lament, where it's coming from a personal perspective. And <clears throat> you have the same basic format as the national lament. The laments focus, focus on, number one, our enemies, number two, on self, and number three, on God himself. And they often end with confession and prayers against one's enemies. And so you have hymns of praise, individual praise, descriptive praise, declarative praise, national lament, and individual lament. As we go through our psalms, we'll <clears throat> see what category they fall into, and we'll have subpoints for all of those uh, psalms as we come across them. <clears throat> so as we go through this uh, uh, study of psalms, I want to look at each psalm, kind of give you a rough outline of it, and then I want to look at it from three different perspectives. One is I will address the past application, historically, who wrote this psalm, uh, what, is, what is all the his, historical significance of it. <clears throat> so we'll look at the past application. And then I'll address the prophetical application or the doctrinal application. What does this psalm have to do with the future? Almost every psalm is prophetic, just about. And uh, some are about the millennium, some are about the tribulation, some are about the second coming of Christ. A lot of them are about the first coming of Christ, too, so that would have been prophetic back then. So we'll mention all of that as we go along. And then I'll also want to address the personal application or the devotional application. What does this psalm have to do for me and you? How can we apply it to our lives? What, you know, all the Bible is not written to you, but all the Bible is written for you. And uh, there's... So much that you can gain from the book of Psalms about God, who he is, what his nature is, what are his attributes. Uh, like I said, opening up, this is the very heart of God. You know, you read in Matthew and Luke and John about Jesus dying on the cross and you see what he physically went through. When you come through the book of Psalms, you see what was going on in his head. You see his prayers. You see the very heart of what was going on while he was hanging on that cross. And so we'll examine all this and hopefully... It'll bring you closer to the Lord. Let's go ahead and end in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I just pray that this uh, 
uh, teaching on Psalms will be prof- profitable, Lord, and that, Lord, everybody who's tuned in listening, Lord, will uh, develop a, a stronger devotional life because of it, Lord. We ask all this for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.